Hey, this is Phoenix. Welcome back to another installment of my review series of uh, Hawks and Pox. Today we are with, uh, let's see here, Powers of Ten, Issue One. Um, try and remember what the subtitle was. The Last Dream of Professor X. I always like that. The subtitles. And it kicks off with um, showing that there's multiple timelines, I guess, going through the story and after this issue. Um, you have the X-Men Year 1, called, and it says The Dream, and then X-Men X1, so Year 10, The World, um, Year 1000, The War, then Year... Sorry, Year 100, The War, Year 1000, Ascension. And the first two are Professor X... In the wheelchair version, and then Professor X as of today, I guess, with the helmet. And then you had Professor... No, it's Nimrod. And then I forget the next being, because I don't remember his name. But it shows um, Xavier in the past. He sits down with Moira McTaggart. He doesn't realize who it is. and But Moira knows who he is, and they talk about these cards and tarot cards. And she's like, look into my mind. And, you know, he probably finds out all about whatever she's dealing with. But this is during a time where he does not know her or recognize her at the time. And then from there, it goes right into year 10, which, to be honest, I believe year 10 really is just now of the comic. <laughs> and it has, you know, where Mystique and Toad, they go back to Kokoa. They give, like, a some type of cipher slash you know, like a USB stick to a Magneto um, for their big dream. And I guess whatever her data that she got, you know, is going to help you in kind. And they talk back and forth. And of course, Professor X is there and they're meant to be all together, you know, happily. <laughs> and it's a weird dichotomy since, you know, you have Xavier and you also have Magneto there together. So that's pretty weird. But they're all for the same goal. Um, So I don't know what they're doing just yet, but, but then it goes directly to year 100 with a couple new mutants that I, to be honest, some of them matter, some of them don't. Um, and you have, uh, like, sentinel-looking things coming after them. Silo Bell is one of them. The, uh, the name of the mutants. And I believe uh, the mutants they're going after right now, at least in this issue, are part of a experiment they talk about. Um of uh, genetic mutation and how it's passed on and how there are select individual mutants that were meant to be disposed of or something like that. So, they're getting attacked. And to be honest, the art, by the way, I guess I'll mention it since it, uh, it matters to me, at least for this one, um, is spectacular. Like, it's, like, I can tell it's, di I'm assuming it's very digital, the um, the way they approach making the art because it, it's vi very vibrant. Um, I'm looking at it on... Um, my uh, Surface Duo instead of my tablet, but it's it's something else. I'll tell you that, and I've been loving it. And some of them get captured, and some of them run away. Uh, I think Silo Bell gets captured, and they tell you eventually in the in the book what the each mutant's power was and like how it like they can change their genetic code. It's sort of like uh, CRISPR today almost, <laughs> where you can like go in, look at a DNA strand, and change it around for something else. Let's see here. Try to remind myself. Then it talks about Mr. Sinister and the whole, um, the X-Gene itself, the generations of it, and how the powers come together and the strands. Um, and then the fall of Krakoa, supposedly. So it's like, it's weird because you see Krakoa as of today, but then you're looking at timelines in the future and what has happened since then, and the fall, the rise, and all that stuff. And then you get to year... Dear God, what year is this? I guess it was still year 100, yeah. With Nimrod, which I forget who he is, but he's um, in charge of uh, was the human machine monolith. And he's in charge of these experiments, and he had to get one of the mutants. He's got to make them talk by putting them in this weird chamber that uh, sort of is like death, but they're technically sort of alive for like another thousand years. Because you see, they put Silo Bell in the chamber. And. 
Hopefully I'm getting the right name right. <laughs> I read it last night, but... Um, once she goes in the chamber, you can see that it... Uh, oh, yeah, the, the Sentinel Mutant Breeding Camps. So it's literally like a holocaust. It's, like, it's pretty insane. And then it brings you to... Oh, yeah, I think this is back to present. Oh, no, no, this is... um. You're 100 still. The mutants that survived, the ones who ran away and made it out and sadly couldn't get Silo Bell, they go through the Krakoan portal. It's still a thing in year 100 of this timeline. And when they go through, you see an older Magneto, a Wolverine, a Groot, and another guy that has like a skull fiery uh, head. <laughs> and they talked about the population of the mutants and where they are and the locations and stuff like that. And it... It's weird. It's like they really are making a whole new like background for this era of X-Men. So this is pretty interesting. And then it gets to year 1000. And it talks about the Archive of Nimrod the Greater, the Mutant Library. Um, ch -ch -ch -ch. And the guy in the year 1000, the blue guy I was mentioning in the beginning, I think he just goes by the librarian. And Nimrod is now like a little machine with him. And they talk about, you know, the the world as of then, and it's some crazy stuff, I will say that. Let's see here. And I think it just ends with, let's see, talking about the remnants of the past, and yeah, overall it's not bad. Um... I will say, it's, I wouldn't say it's confusing, but it's all new to me. And maybe, I guess it was new to everyone to an extent when they read this too back in 2019. So, I don't feel left out necessarily. Like, I've been reading backup stuff beforehand just to have a general knowledge of certain events. So, I, if they do pertain to this, which they should, I mean, it's still X-Men. So, everything that's happened beforehand still counts. But this is like a new era, so. But yeah, overall, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm... I am loving it, but uh, let's see here. Yeah, um, for the next one, I guess uh, we'll be talking about, let's see here, House of X number two. And uh, yeah, love this issue, the power side of things. I'm not really sure what the really difference is. At the, at the end of the day, they're coinciding, coinciding stories. So really, I, I, I'm trying to, under, like, I get the House of X reference now. It's, it's in that literal place with the powers of ten. Not yet. Not there yet. I don't know. Um, I'm loving the timeline stuff. So uh, I'll be back with another uh, segment of these. And I hope you're enjoying these. And uh, have a good one.